Good morning and welcome to Fat Cow Farm. Now we've got a little bit of exciting news. I've got um, this 25,000 litre water tank that um, I've had sitting in the front home paddock for quite a while. And um, and now that I've just pretty much got the, the roof squared away on this shed, it's now time to start thinking about with winter coming and really getting some, um, maximizing this roof space for water flow. So what I want to be doing with this one is then using it for irrigation and things like that when, when possible and have a few connections for backups. Um, looking at a, um, a feed back to the homestead. So there's a few things going on that we really want to start utilizing this water. So I've got one that will be set up here and I've got to have another one set up at the far end. And um, But really what I wanted to do was just I found this product and as a part of, and I suppose most people go through this, but I, I've never seen it. We've got close to, for the, for the quarter of the roof that we have, because I've we've got the um, gutters running to both ends. So we've got two sides that are going to be feeding this here, which is a um, hundred, what am I trying to say here? hundred cubic, no. 100 square meters, <laughs> I'll get there, 100 square meters. So what, well, it was too much of an opportunity not to use the dew, the ice, especially at now we're getting sort of icy mornings now. Still haven't seen any rain, but there is still a lot of water coming off this, this roof. Anyway, when my thought process was that because we're gonna be using it, I'm gonna have a drip feed going back to the homestead. Because it's so big, you know, we are going to have our solar panels up there and all that sort of stuff. There's a lot going on um, about contaminants. Now, I haven't really thought too much in it, but it was always sitting in the back of my mind. And I really didn't know how I was going to deal with that. And um, anyway, when I was down the plumbing shop, we were, I was getting some bits and pieces and I was sort of talking to the guy and... He said there's a, a product called a first flush. And this is really what I wanted to show you was that basically what happens is that you can work out a square meter each. So on this side of the roof going halfway is, is 50 square meters. And then there's a table that you can work off. And based on that square meterage area, for us, we needed to have a two meter downpipe basically running vertical off our feed. So what happens is that the first mill, well, first major rain, that gets, um, the first two meter section gets sort of filled up first, and then the cl supposedly clean water then starts coming around and filling up the tank. Now, I come around and I'll, I'll, I wanna show you sort of what it is. So, this is it here. So you can imagine the rainwater coming through, hitting this T section. This will then fill up. And then I'll, I'll show you what's in there because it was it's so simple, it's genius. And then the byproduct then comes around and feeds into the tank. And then so what we have here is um, This little plastic ball. So what happens is that the the ball basically floats up to this T section, and then what we have is almost like a a round orifice knife edge that the ball then sits on and seals. That then allows the water to come across and then back into your tank. And I thought, well, that's you know sort of opening up the, the box while I was there. And I thought, okay, that's quite good. But how does the water then come out? So what there is then is that at the bottom, there's like a, a filter that sort of sits at the bottom cap here. That just sits in there like that. Now, I imagine that is gonna get really, really dirty really, really quickly. So that's gonna have to be a, a maintenance thing 
on a regular ongoing sort of scenario. But that sort of sits there like that. And then you have an option, I'm not sure. Let me see if I can get this out. You then have an option of these seals. And these little seals have a tiny little hole in it. I'm not sure if you can pick that up there. Um, but this one says 0.5. So what I'm guessing is that that's 0.5 of a litre probably every hour. So what's going to happen is that as we're getting rain, we're going to be losing half a litre over an hour through that little drip hole. So that sort of just sits in here like that. And I imagine what will end up happening is that we just put a a hose fitting on that that barb section there and then they have have it running off into onto the ground but this still needs to have or get watertight and everything else but yeah but that's basically the principle that sits in there like that and the ball sort of sits there and then the ball rises and as this drops off the ball sinks down and then granted, you know, depending on the on the flow or the rain that you've got coming through, you know, there's going to be a point where this just fills up. So, you know, there's quite a bit of water in, in this, this two metre section. I've got some calculations there. I can't remember off the top of my head. But anyway, I thought we'll give it a crack. And, you know, if worse comes to worse, then basically all you do is put your cap on. <laughs> then stop it or seal it up there. But I thought, as a bit of a gimmick, I thought I'd give that a crack, especially if we're pump or transferring this water back to the homestead. So anyway, I just thought I, what I'd do is touch base about how we're setting up our water catchment from the shed to the 25,000 litre water tank. And then what I've got to do, you can see up here, I've just got to return that um, gutter end back to here. So we'll have a dual feed coming in off this side. Um, so I'll sort that one out this afternoon and um, and really everything's just pinned and then what I'll do is I'll mark everything up we'll glue um, make sure that we're all right because I think that what I, I'll probably end up doing is just spraying out these pipes the same color as the shed because it's a bit of an eyesore but <laughs> anyway that'll be something but I wanted to make sure that while we've got these frosty mornings get some fluids into this tank here and keep the ball valve open because um, basically what we've got there is that when we, we were drilling all the ball valves and, and overflows and things like that you always get that bit of plastic and stuff in the tank we'll just get rid of that first once I'm happy that it's all cleaned then um, we'll shut off the ball valve and then off we go from there so anyway what I'll do is we'll keep you updated about you know let's say well, let's see we, we talk about another six months or something like that about how this little guy is going because I can see that's been going to be I don't know you're probably looking at every let's say every month cleaning that out um, but anyway we'll see what happens bit of a gimmick <laughs> I think the principle on there is quite good though and you know making sure that you've got that flush coming through all right so all about getting your capturing your rainwater for a new rainwater tank and looking at this um, first flush system, like and subscribe, and I'll see you soon.